Good evening. The subject of education and the problems the sector faces in as we go on in Britain are matters of concern for us all. With that in mind, I've selected three articles by an eminent historian, Simon Webb, who is a, a well-known historian and has published numerous books and is considered an authority in many areas to look at. Mr. Webb today put forward three articles. I'd like to look at them in succession and report on his findings. In his first article, he puts forward the proposition, fast forward to the present day, and it seems to, according to teachers, only a quarter of children starting school are toilet trained. No wonder because only a fifth of parents think this is something which children should be thought before they start school. Unfortunately, Mr. Webb's data seems flawed in this regard. As we look at the this PDF document, School Readiness Survey, he used, you will find, as you go down it, that rather than only a quarter of children being um, toilet trained, it, rather 75% are. And <sighs> Mr. Webb has reversed the figures. Let's read out his point again. According to teachers, only a quarter of ch um, children starting school are toilet trained. What he's missed is it says one in four children starting reception class are not toilet trained. He's unfortunately misunderstood this very simple document, it would seem. It would appear that he has some basic problems with maths and reading comprehension. So, unfortunately, we have to give him a failing grade on this particular subject area. He then moved on to make the claim in a second video today, take the Dominican Republic, for instance. Dominica shares the island of Hispanola with Haitia, and Haitians have traditionally crossed the border into Dominicans whenever country, conditions in their own country become unpleasant. This will come as news to um, members of the Dominican Republic for one very good reason. This is the Dominican Republic. As you'll notice, it does indeed share the island with Haiti, Haiti there, but it's not the same country as Dominica. Dominica is an island nation. It's part of the Lesser Antilles archipelago in the Caribbean Sea. And as you'll notice, it's rather far off from it. Um, it would probably be a good idea to check this, Simon, particularly. So we'll have to give you a failing grade, I'm afraid, in geography. It would appear that you need to source your material more thoroughly. The final article was really ran into the issues of what you might call civic virtue or how students should approach how we view vulnerable populations in the world or how we respond to news articles. Simon put forward a proposition in response to um, an article about a, a blind cyclist of Lithuanian origin in Dublin. What we need to ask ourselves are questions about the kind of people that abandon their countries and go off and live somewhere else. Well, really, Simon, you can't really extrapolate using one Lithuanian cyclist about a whole population. That's rather silly. Um, you then try to qualify it by going, you weren't doing that, but you do seem to be actually attempting to do that by introducing the idea in the first place. It becomes especially silly when we know the historian's background and we know he himself has gone to live elsewhere and work elsewhere. It then becomes rather odd. Leaving aside that, there are plenty of Lithuanians in Irish history who have contributed to the country. They are by no means a major population group. Even now, there's the most up-to-date figure I could find indicated there was probably around 35 to 36,000 Lithuanians in Ireland. Um, and I imagine that probably includes people who have dual citizenship and so forth. But I can think of figures like Michael Noyk, Michael Collins' solicitor, 
who was instrumental in the War of Independence, Robert Briscoe, whose father was Lithuanian, who I've mentioned in several other videos, and somebody in Simon's comments mentioned this lady who I'd forgotten about but had heard of vaguely. This lady here, Greta, and I apologise if I'm not pronouncing her surname right because um, Greta Stry Mike so, so made her international debut for the Irish Paralytics teams at the 2016 European Paralytics Championships. Um, this is a lady who runs while she's effectively legally blind and runs 1,500-metre races. I would say she's probably a gain for the country, since that requires, uh, well, quite a lot of courage to do. I'm quite short-sighted if I take my specs off here, and I certainly wouldn't want to be running 1,500 metres down the road without them, or 150 metres either, for that matter. I'm afraid, overall, I must conclude that... <clears throat> These are very poorly sourced articles and award a failing grade on in all subject knowledge areas here. The lack of sourcing, the use of generalizations, black swan fallacies, anecdotal evidence, what basically amounts to gossip and rumor renders these essentially worthless as historical documents or anything more than pub gossip.